Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. David Pendleton here, and I'm gonna play some Tor 8 today on a new iPad. So when it comes to this new iPad, this is a ninth generation iPad. I was playing on an iPad 7th gen previously. I've had this iPad now for about a week and I haven't played it much. I have not played it at all in tournament play because I'm having a hard time hitting perfect on this iPad. Now, um, I, I don't know what the difference is. I'm trying to figure out a way to explain it, but like on this iPad, everything seems, I guess, a lot smoother, maybe. Uh, something's up though. I know that I'm, I am struggling to hit perfect when it comes to this new iPad. So I don't know if there's something, what the difference is. I'm not a tech wizard. But I don't know what the difference is between this ninth generation iPad and the seventh generation iPad. Um, but I just cannot consistently hit perfect balls on this thing. So I'm going to play some Tour 8 today and try to wrap up the season and weekly challenges since this is the last week of this season and see if I can't get my timing down because ultimately, you know, I really need to switch um, to this iPad to play tournaments. Because my other iPad is completely out of space, um, no matter what I do. But again, it's an old iPad. It's only a 32 gigabyte. So as I save my replays and I edit video content, I'm constantly fighting having to um, remove stuff and delete stuff. And it's just becoming a huge, huge headache for me. So I finally saved up enough to get this iPad. I need one more. But... I got to figure out how to hit perfect on this thing. Start off with a great ball. Uh, I already forgot what challenges I'm trying to get after. I know I need 15 more drives. 15 more drives over 350. So that's one right there, and I'll get the 500 season points. Now, these season points and season challenges, these are really important to me. Because as I as I progress through the stages, I'm able to get, you know, those tournament, the, not the tournament chest, but the, the season chest to have a good amount of gems in them. And I'm also able to pick up like the T explosions that have practice tokens in them, which is probably my most valuable resource when it comes to making tournament content is I feel like I go through, you know, so many practice tokens on a weekly basis. So, you know, thanks to the people who donate to my channel. I use those donations to get things like the season pass, which helps me, you know, earn more tokens because there's more, there's more of those things in the season pass that give away tokens like the whole explosions and things of that nature. Now let's see if we can get lucky here. I doubt it. I never make this shot. Just a couple times I can remember ever dropping this hole. Well, there's a perfect ball. Ah, oh, that's funny. Why don't you know it? I complained about never making this hole, and there we go. We start off with a drop. All right, cool. <clears throat> so that'll work. I will go through here um, after this game, like I said, and show you exactly what I'm trying to do as far as the season and weekly challenges go. I'm pretty sure that the weekly challenge is to get 25,000 yards, um, hit 50 perfect shots, I believe. And then I think the only season one that I have left is to drive 15 games over 350 yards. So that's what we're going for today. Most importantly, I'm just trying to hit perfect balls on this iPad so I can get this thing figured out. Because I think not this week, but not next week, but the week after, I'm going to fully switch to only playing on this new iPad. Let me know what kind of device you all play on. Oh, sweet. We got a challenge there, too. That's nice. That must have been the, um, that must have been the daily challenge to win with an eagle. Didn't even pay attention to that one. All right. Cool. Well, we'll take that all day. So there we go. Win one game with an eagle. Play one game using the down and one. No thanks. Play one game using the extra mile. That's easy. Okay, yeah, 25,000 yards, 50 perfect shots, three daily challenges. That'll be easy. I'm not going to do the shootout one. It's too difficult to go to that many shootouts. 
uh, drive over 350 yards and everything else is done. So again, you know, I just want to say thanks to the people who donate to my channel. It does mean a lot, you know, that five or $10 at a time really helps me out because you'll see here that I was able to take some donations and open up the bottom level of the season rewards. And you can just see here how many practice tokens we get along the way. There's three, there's three more, that's six, there's four more for 10. And then now that's five more for 15. Plus I got this one right here that gives me, um, you know, six times three, that's 18. So that's 33 tokens. Plus another five, there's 38. Um, plus another five more coming up soon. It's at 43, and I won't make it all the way over here, uh, which would be really nice to pick that one up, but, you know, I won't, I won't have enough time to grind that many games out to get over there. But anyways, um, that's what I'm trying to accomplish today, and that's why that season pass is so important to me as somebody who creates tournament content, because you just saw that's 33 practice tokens I'm able to use, and I probably used 33 practice tokens alone just between the opening and the qualifying round. Between the qualifying round and the opening round. Doesn't even include the finals. Okay. See here, we almost need to go to a Quasar. And a Quasar Navigator is the most powerful ball that I'll ever spend on Tour 1. Uh, tour 1, goodness gracious. On Tour 8. Can't get my thoughts together today. Seven three, so we're gonna try to go there and see if the wind will just push us out of the rough. <clears throat> so, like I was saying, you know, um, typically when I play Tour Eight, it's gonna be Navigator and Quasar. I normally save all of my not Navigator. Boy, I cannot talk today. It's Marlin and Quasar. I typically save my navigators for tournaments. Now, back in the day on Tour 8, before I made tournament content, I really used to play only with a navigator and Marlin. But now those navigators are super important to me uh, for rookie tournaments, so I don't use them here. Because that's another thing that I have to spend money on to buy consistently is navigators. You know, 300 gems for every 45 balls that you get. A Quasar is a ball that I never, ever use in a tournament. Um, I mean, very, very rarely will you ever see me use a Quasar. So I figured I have so many of them. Why not just go ahead and use them? And whenever I play one-on-one -on -one play on a particular hole like this, where it makes it just a little bit easier to have that extra power to make the drive. We could have made that drive with the Marlin. It would have been just requiring, you know, to push up after my pull, and we don't really need to do that whenever we have this many Quasars sitting around that we can use. Okay, I normally do pretty good on hitting perfect balls out of the rough, but um, again, just trying to get used to this iPad here, I'm, I'm super inconsistent with these perfect shots. Okay, so we're both going to be leaving the ball right next to the pin, and we're going to be heading to a shootout. <laughs> I know people who are watching would, retro would much rather see the shootouts than just winning in regulation, so better for you. More time-consuming for me. <laughs> but that's all right. We got over 350 yards on this one, too. It'd be nice if we could just go 15 games in a row with drives over 350, but we're going to get hit with some nasty headwind eventually. That's not going to help. You always play this um, shootout right here at 30% elevation. Uh, if you're using a P1 ball or a P0 ball in any type of headwind, you won't be able to do the rough bump. 
So keep that in mind. But in any crosswind angle or any tailwind angle, you would always do the rough bump here and you would put pretty much like your yellow ring on the rough line. Set spins to hull. 30% at max. And you're normally going to get yourself within, you know, one yard to three yards every time as long as you hit perfect. And what you're going to do on this hole, if you don't have that ability to play the rough bump, we're going to play on the fairway and we're going to put our ball guideline to the left of the hole, as you always see. Now, our opponent here hit a, a nasty great ball and we're going to win this hole no matter what. But, um... You know, I'll play it as if I'm trying to get super close to the hole to kind of show you what I do here. And you're always going to play it at mid. So you're going to aim somewhere just in this area here. And you just kind of spin your ball to the hole like this. Like I said, always play left-hand side of the hole right here. See, there's like a little nice consistent area here with your ball guy line. So we're going to go 6-6 six, six on the rings. You can see there I put just a baby, just a tick amount of left curl on the shot, even though we're aiming to the left. And I just did that because the wind is pushing to the right-hand side. Wasn't enough, though, but still very close. 3.95. We'll take it. All right, so there's that. Two holes, two wins. We'll just continue to move along here. And try to continue to pick up these challenges. What was the daily one? I think I was done already, right? No more daily. Oh, no, extra mile. Oh, shoot. I got to remember to use the extra mile next hole. Now, on this one, on this hole, we would normally lay up. So on this hole, what we would normally do is we would normally lay up right between the two sand traps here at the top part of the fairway. And then we would take like a downhill funnel shot at 15% at max distance always for shot number two to try to pick up the eagle. But if we take that drive there, you're not going to get 350 yards, I don't think. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to blast this ball as far as possible in what it seems like it's going to be heavy headwind just to see if we can get 350. So I'm not going to be playing this hole for the eagle. I'm going to be playing this hole uh, just trying to get the 350 yards so that we can accomplish the season challenge. When I'm trying to get these challenges, I don't really even focus too much. If I win or lose, I'm just trying to get that challenge done so that I can get the rewards, which is all I really care about. Our opponent is going to have a difficult time getting to the hole in two shots. So we got to use the extra mile. See, I got to set up over here because I want to avoid the rough. I'd much rather use, be using the APOC on this hole, which I guess I could have done and just done the extra mile on the next hole. But let's just see if we can get two done. We're not going to get the perfect shot, though, and I would have rather had a great left than a great right. But with the great right, we still avoided that rough over there, so that's good. Maybe we'll catch some yards on this downhill slope. I really have no idea how many yards this is going to be. 369. We'll take it. Only bad thing is, is these trees are going to be on our way for shot number two. Our opponent can get there. Um, I would probably just play max backspin here. I would have just played max backspin and just landed the ball on the green and rolled back. But he's still there. It's all good. 
Now we'll see if we have any chance. To go over these trees. Dang, I knew these trees were going to be in the way. Oh, we're fine. Every other shot right now is perfect. Too much curl. All right, here we go again to another shootout. Maybe this one will be a little bit more competitive than the last one. But at least we know we got the extra mile one check marked. We're going to get yards, of course. We got at least one perfect ball, and we drove over the 350. So everything's chipping away at those challenges right now. Now, I do have some good news coming for the channel. Adam is going to be doing something to help me out um, with my streaming equipment that I have at home. And we're going to be doing some dual streaming together, which I think is going to be a lot of fun for sure. I hope that's going to be something new on the channel that you all avoid or <laughs> that you all alike, I should say. Still early in the morning today. It's uh, seven o'clock a.m. my time. Obviously, having a hard time <laughs> getting my thoughts together and speaking correctly. All right, pretty good shot. We'll take that. I mean, you know, two point one three. If we lose, then hats off to our opponent. But then we put ourselves in good shape here to try to pick up the win. Hmm. If they were playing with a Navigator or a Quasar, they'd be able to go right at the pin and probably just stick it right next to the hole with a perfect ball. So we're a little bit lucky here that they're using a basic ball. I didn't even notice they were using a basic ball until just now. Ooh, that's a nasty great ball to the right, too. So that could be water. It is water. Yeah, you can't really afford to hit great right on this uh, shootout hole. Because if you do, you go into the water now. I'm going to say you all are um, bringing me a little bit of good luck. Because normally when I'm playing, <laughs> my opponents are sticking the ball right next to the hole. Uh, that's back-to-back -back shots that our opponents have messed up the shootouts. Now, that happens from time to time, but... It seems like very, very rarely does it ever happen for me. Normally, I feel like I'm fighting against my opponents, and they're, they're just crushing the ball right next to the pin. So hopefully I'll continue to bring me good luck, but now it doesn't really matter because my chest slots are full anyways. I don't spend the gems to open them. I love how quickly you find opponents in one-on-one -on -one mode. I don't like how it takes an eternity in tournament mode to find opponents. Boy, let's hope we don't still have that club done. That must have been from a challenge. This seems going to be a lot harder of a drive here. It's a high probability we stick this in the water. But we're going to go for it anyways. Definitely prefer an APOC on this drive over anything else. But we're going to have to hit a perfect ball here. A great right, great left, and, and I'm sure we're going swimming. Oh, see, man, I can't hit perfect on this thing. That was a nasty great ball, too. And we're going to get very lucky. That, that drive is actually going to work out. Holy cow. It's not going to go 350. Just couldn't get 350 in that headwind angle on this hole. Super fortunate we didn't go swimming there. I must have left enough room 
on the fairway to not have that happen. Even with a Titan ball driving on the left-hand side. Okay, well, they're going to go right. I was going to say, even with a Titan ball driving on the left-hand side of the fairway, you're going to have an extremely hard time getting in between the sand traps on shot number two um, to get onto the green. Unless you're bringing like maybe a big dog or a cataclysm. But most people are playing toward eight with a sniper. Extra mile seven is going to have a difficult shot here. Landing this ball onto the uh, second fairway. Especially with a, with a great ball. Because the accuracy is not going to bail you out. Oh, we're getting lucky today. Maybe it's an early Monday morning and people are just waking up and playing. Oh, we're going to have to use overpower here to get this shot to work. Or to even try to work, I should say. There we go. Perfect ball. Every other shot, perfect. That's what we needed to do. We needed to not catch that rough there um, on the second bounce, and we just barely made it past there. So that worked out. This is a situation now where I wish the opponent would just forfeit. That's what I would do instead of wasting time like this and wasting a ball. So this is going to be using two Titan balls on one hole. So to keep that in mind, if you've never thought about that, if you water a ball or if you stick one out of bounds, it's going to cost you another ball to play. So, you know, if you wanted to even try to get yourself back into the game on a hole like this, and really the only way they can come close is if I miss this shot. But should have switched to a basic ball or a Marlin or something. I mean, just unless you got thousands of Titan balls lying around, but that's a chip-in shot. We're not going to miss even with a great, but again... Great, perfect, great on this hole. Only one perfect shot along the way. There's just no way right now I could play a tournament um, on this iPad or else I'd be cursing every other hole because <laughs> I'd be messing up every shot, right? But here's a look at shot number two. I mean, like I said, even with a Titan ball, you're going to have a hard time getting to the green and tee with a sniper. You have to avoid the rough on the right. Then you also have to avoid the sand trap on the left. It's just difficult, especially in any headwind angle, to get there. But we're four for four so far, so we'll take four for four all day. And there's really nothing to check in on. I mean, this is just going to be just playing one game after another, one game after another. On this hole, um, you pretty much want to drive to the left-hand side every time unless you're playing a tournament. If you're playing a tournament, what we would do is we, we would use a P3 ball in this situation. We would drive right-hand side, and we would try to find this little funnel that is um, that's on the green that slopes up from behind the hole and rolls back into the pin. But, you know, at worst case scenario, you're going to have to use a katana ball to accomplish that, that shot. And that's not something that we're going to spend up on here on this tour. Man, what is going on right now with the opponents? Let's see if we can blast this one 350. We're going to have to go max OP for sure. Oh, 
minor great to the left. Darn it. Need these perfect shots, man. All good. Got there by 12 yards. Okay. Now, shot number two is not going to be easy for us, though. All right. Let's see if we can get over this sand trap here. Okay, so this is what we're going to have to do. Work is close to starting here in about an hour. Okay, my work computer trying to tell me you have meetings. My first meeting is at 8 30. Another great ball. We're not going to get any perfect shots on this stinking hole. But, you know, on that one there, I just needed to evaluate how much power it was going to be to get over the sand trap. And really, I needed the accuracy to be there as well. So the best thing for me to do was to adjust for the wind. And then after that adjustment, I needed to push back up to max. There was a good chance that if I would have just adjusted for the wind and then taken the shot that I come up short on that hole. So pushing back up to max and then using that overpower is what helped me get there to the green. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know if it does. I mean, I've been playing this game for so long. I just kind of have a good grasp. Every once in a while of what I need to do. Get in the hole. Oh. That was close. Opponent almost saved their hole to force a shootout. Can I please get a perfect ball? Put. Give me one perfect on this hole, please. Just one, baby. I got it. Man, we've almost got 3,000 yards towards that one challenge, nine there. 11 more big drives to go. <clears throat> Some people ask about trophy level two, like why my trophies are so low for a Tor 8 player. It's because whenever I build accounts, and you should look at my new account build series, I don't play Tor 7, I skip Tor 7. I only play enough of the tour to unlock the next tour. Um, so tour seven, there's nothing really valuable there when it comes to club cards. Tour six is where we spend the majority of our time um, on new account builds outside of tour two. Tour two is where you're going to build your extra mile. Tour six is where you're going to build your sniper. So, um, and then tour eight as well really helps with building a sniper and some other clubs. So, you know, my trophies are that way just because I skip tours along the way. Like Tour 5, I only play enough games in order to unlock Tour 6. And then Tour 6, I play enough games to ultimately unlock Tour number 8. Um, just saves time. And again, there's some of those tours don't matter from building club perspective. Tour 2 and Tour 6 are probably the best tours in the game to build the clubs you're going to be using a lot of the time which is going to be your extra mile and your sniper. So again, tour two, extra mile, tour six, sniper. If you're not familiar with, um, with how that works, keep in mind I have a playlist section on my channel called New Account Build, and it literally shows you um, how to quickly build up your clubs very fast. Again, starting with the extra mile, get that thing built up to, to an extra mile of eight real quick will allow you to play any tours, you know, really 1 through 10 uh, pretty effectively once you have your sniper. 
at a decent level as well. And that's going to be on tour number six where you would grind away at that. All right, well, our opponent just put one right next to the friend, so we know they're going to eagle this hole. We really need a perfect ball here, man. Hey, and we got one. So one bounce, two bounce. Look at that. I think we're going to be right next to our opponent. We're going to be friends right there. All right, well, here we go. So they're in. Now let's see if we can do the same thing and go to another shootout here. But at least we got one perfect shot. We got our drive over 350. Could we get lucky and get two perfect shots in a row? Now, even a perfect or a great should make this one here, especially in tailwind. <laughs> we get another great ball. Can't do it. But like I said, a perfect aura grade is going to get that ball into the hole. That was just too easy of a wind angle. Okay, let's see what we got going on now. You can play this one between 20 and 30%. So we'll just go 25 just for fun. Our opponent's using another basic ball. What's going on today? I'm telling you, this is not normal. Um, I've normally got people using maxed out clubs. Not maxed out, but I'm normally playing opponents with APOC 6s or at least extra mile 8 and 9s. I feel like normally a money ball every other hole. So maybe because there's not a ball pack out right now. I feel like I play a lot when there's a ball pack out and you get a lot of headwind and you see opponents using those balls. So maybe because there's not a ball pack out right now, people are just kind of playing regular. That's a tough shot to take with a big dog. Again, I mean, maybe you all are just bringing me good luck because that's another opponent that's way off on their shot. We're going to back up to our sniper. I mean, here we're just trying to look for a ball guideline. Since we don't have to do anything special, we're just going to take this shot right here. We'll probably end up five to seven yards away. Unless we get a good roll on that slope. But um, we don't have to do anything crazy. I don't even have to try to dial this one in to get close. I just really need to hit a, a perfect ball or even a great ball. I, I think no matter what here, we're going to win this hole. Hit a nasty great, but like I said, it's not going to matter because the ball guideline will be just fine. Coming down towards the pin. Now, I want to say, uh, even though my opponents are playing bad, that's, you know, I think every shootout I think that we've gone to, I've been within two to three yards. So it would still be difficult to beat me in that, in that when you're looking at it that way. But man, like, see what I mean with this iPad? Can somebody explain to me maybe who has a lot more technical acumen than I do? Man, that's going to be almost anybody. What's the difference here? It, something is so much different. I cannot get the timing down on this iPad to hit perfect. I wish I could. It's going to be a far drive. Three sixty eight. Oh boy. 
11 miles an hour. That's going to be difficult for us to get that kind of yardage. I don't think we're going to be able to get 350 here. This could be a nasty shot. I'm going to have to go max OP. Max OP on this hole. Great right. You're going to push into the rough. Great left probably puts into the rough too because the fairway slopes down pretty bad. That's just a minor, minor great left though. With the wind blowing to the right, we might be okay. We might even get the yards here. See that green really slopes from right to left, but we got it enough distance where it didn't matter. Ooh, and we got the 10 yards. We got the 350 by 10 yards. Sweet. Well, we're going to be definitely heading to another shootout here. In a tournament, we would normally take this shot with a guardian and try to catch that backspin into the hole. Perfect ball. Put one more perfect shot on the board. So that guardian, you would really catch that slope and then come down, but the sniper just runs out of juice with the backspin. But that's all right. Maybe we can get a perfect putt. Maybe. There we go, another perfect shot. I normally play this one like 10 or 15%. This depends on the wind. I'll probably play it 15% here with the headwind or the tailwind, I mean. Ooh, perfect ball. I didn't see the setup, though. I was busy typing away. This is going to be close. Oh, they're going to come in too hot, though. They're going to hit the pin. They got the good camera angle, just a little bit too hot. Still a great shot, man. Tough to beat. That's going to be tough to beat. Well, hey, at least we hit perfect. That's three perfect balls in a row. Oh, goodness gracious, David. Wow, I missed by a mile. Wow, that's crazy.
Hey, but it's most important that we got those perfect shots and that drive. Hey, we're going to get a replay or a rematch. How rare is that? Let's go. Oh, I hope we don't get headwind on this hole. This little snake fairway is difficult to get done in headwind. Almost no chance to get 350. It's a good chance here to stick this one in the sand or in the rough. If one of us lands on the fairway, that person's going to win. And due to the camera angle here, they're going to go in the rough. So, can we get on the fairway? Okay. That's going to be difficult. It's like sand. Oh, sand and rolled out. Well, our opponent's a lot further than we are, but I think we're still both in trouble here. We're going to go to a shootout again. Boy, if they could catch the middle of that fairway there just right, they could get a good bounce and get themselves within chipping range. Okay. We're going to have to lay up on the fairway here. I'll try to lay up on the fairway, I guess I should say. Okay, there's a chance we can make this shot here. Not too bad. So it's 7.52 right now. Probably have to wrap this up here in about 15 or 20 minutes and get my work day started. It's actually a really good wind angle to drop this shot. It's a good chance of the perfect ball we make this. Yeah, buddy. Called it. Doesn't get any easier to drop a shot from direct tailwind or direct headwind when you get to take a shot at exactly minimum distance. So a lot of good variables there to pick that shot up. Can we go one more? Yeah, we're going to go best out of three with Tommy. It does not happen too often to go to get... Uh, best out of three with the competitor. I like that. It's exciting. And 
Normally we want to go here and bounce over. We can't do that. We're for sure not going to get 350 yards on this drive. That sucks. This hole right here, you know, unless your opponent brings out a powerful ball, and um, especially in headwind, you're normally going to go to a shootout. So I was trying to say, normally, unless they bring out a powerful ball and they're able to hit that drive to go from one fairway up to that top part of the fairway, they then they can get themselves in the chip-in distance. It's possible, but um, headwind makes it a lot more difficult unless you're using a powerful ball. So that's why I say the majority of this time you're going to a shootout on this hole. Even in the bunker, though, they're still going to be able to easily get to the green in two. So not a big deal. I can promise you that I will not make this shot. I'm starting to pick up some consistency, though, with hitting perfect right now. Right next to the pin, though. Maybe a little bit of left or right side spin. The old Houdini. I actually had a challenge the other day to use the Houdini club, so I've stuck one in the sand on purpose. And it actually made a really cool shot for the eagle out of the sand with the Houdini. Now, they're going to try to play that slope. I like that. That should be cool if they made this, but they're going to be at max distance, so that's going to be difficult. All right, so like I said, even being in the sand, they're going to have no problem getting to the green in two. That's exactly what happened. Now we get to go to another shootout. So three games against Tommy here, all going to a shootout. He won the first one. I won the second one. No, we didn't go to a shootout the last game. I dropped the eagle. Never mind. See, I'm not, I'm not awake yet. My thought process has not kicked in yet. And I'm trying this intermittent fasting for 30 days before we go on vacation, which means... Um, you take a 16 hour break in between meals from, from the night before to your meal the next day. So I downloaded this app called zero that kind of keeps the time for you. So when you take your last bite of your last meal last night, you start the clock and then it lets you know the next day when you can eat, I can eat at 10 25 this morning. Cause I stopped eating at like 6 25 last night. Oh, so I'm trying to get just a couple pounds off before we head out for vacation. But with the intermittent fasting, you can't have like energy drinks or anything. It's just water or black coffee, something like that in between meals. And I've never had coffee. Don't intend to. So I'm kind of just sitting here waiting. Get out of my way, tree. Oh, man, the shot clock's almost done. What happened? Oh, another perfect ball. Maybe I'm getting the hang of it. Now, this one, I am trying to stick right next to the pin because we don't know how good our opponent's going to play. I'm happy with that shot. It's going to be about three yards away. 2 not nine four. We'll take it.
All right, we're about five seconds away from knowing if we won or lost. Let's see what happens here. Oh, their shot looks looks like it's going to slow down a little bit too much. Uh-oh. Ah, we won. Barely. Well, that was good. We got to play the same opponent three times. We played quite a few games too. We've only lost one so far, so we'll take that. And I'm gonna play till I win one more game so that I can fill up this chess slot and then we'll call it a good session. Win or lose here. I think we did good overall. We made a lot of progress towards our challenges. It's bright and early on Monday morning, so I've got the rest of the week to knock this thing out. But I've got another one on my other rookie account that I gotta do. The season challenge, I got to get 160 perfect shots on that account. And I've, I've only got like 10. I've only played a couple games so far on Tour 8 on that account. So a lot of work to do on that one throughout the rest of the week. Uh, we're going to have no chance to get the 350 yards on this hole. We're going to get direct headwind. We're more than likely going to stick this one into the sand with a perfect shot. So I might just even lay up on the front part of the fairway. There's a good chance our opponent ends up in the sand here, too, or the rough. Even with the P3 ball, you're going to have a difficult time at 10 miles an hour getting this one perfectly centered to hit that fairway in between the sand trap to bounce onto the fringe or green. But they did full overpower. They did hit perfect. So if they're going to get it, they did everything they needed to do. I've never seen anybody land on the fairway. <laughs> I've never seen anybody land on the fairway here. That's funny. Uh, you know what? Let's see if we can get 350 this way and not even care about getting ourselves into the bushes. Can we do that? Probably still not possible. Oh, gosh. Definitely not possible with that. Oh, there's a good chance they make this too. But probably not with that bad of a great ball. Okay, so let's see if we can get ourselves onto the green somehow from this crappy angle to force a shootout. Yeah, we can do it. So we're going to shoot here. And we're going to do this. And we're going to hit great like that. And we'll be okay. This time that was an intentional great ball. Was not trying to hit perfect there. Just trying to swing it around to land onto the green to get ourselves within putting range to force the shootout. This is exactly what we did. Hopefully I can hit a perfect putt. Hopefully I can hit a perfect shootout and we'll get two perfect balls on this hole and at least get that challenge done there or progress towards that challenge there, I should say. Okay, got one perfect ball. At this rate, it's going to take an eternity to get those 50 perfect balls, man. All right, so... We're probably going to try to play on the right-hand side of the sand trap. 
I would normally play on the left-hand side where our opponent is right now, just not in this wind angle. This wind angle makes it a bit tougher because normally what has to happen is you have to use right curl on this hull um, from, this, from this landing spot. And then if you over curl it or hit a great ball to the right, you could end up in the sand trap. And then still the secondary wind push is going to push you to the left-hand side of the hull too. That's honestly not, not a terrible shot from that angle that they just did there. What you want to try to do is use the wind here in your favor. See, the wind is going to push us to the left naturally. A little bit of left curl, perfect ball, bounce. Stop. Get in the hole, baby. Here we go. That's a good way to, to end the stream. But I think I got time. I actually got time for one more. Let's see if we can get a rematch. I got time for one more before my work day starts. No rematch from our opponent there. So let's see where we're at on these challenges. 6,000, 20. We need nine more drives, and then we're going to be good. So let's go one more. I appreciate everybody hanging in here with me today. I don't know how many people watch these videos in entirety, but hopefully it helps people, you know, who are in Tor 8 that need a little bit of help. Come on, Tailwind. Ugh. What's up with all this headwind now, man? Now, nobody ever drives left-hand side on this hole for some reason. Uh, we do in tournaments. But if you could get good in one-on-one -on -one tour play on driving on the left-hand side of this hole, you have an excellent shot at picking up the drop. Our opponent's trying to go left. That's funny that I said that because literally nobody ever tries to go left on this hole. Uh, they did try to go left, and they stuck in the rough, so they're going to be in trouble. But if you can get good at hitting the left-hand side of this fairway, man, uh, there's an excellent chance to drop the shot. Hey, a fully overpowered, perfect shot. What? Oh, don't hit the rough up there. Good. Now, are we going to have enough juice to get 350? It doesn't look like it, man. It doesn't look like it. No, not even close. Ugh, we're getting some bad luck now on these headwind drives. But I don't think our, yeah, our opponent cannot get there in two. Uh, we will be able to eagle this hole. So unless our opponent makes a chip-in shot from up here, we're going to be winning this one in regulation. But, hey, that is all that I have um, time for today. I woke up bright and early to get a start on these season challenges and the weekly challenges. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, pretty quiet today so far. As, again, it's very early, and all I've had to drink is just water. I normally start my day by heading right down to the fridge and getting an energy drink out of the fridge. But with this fasting thing that I'm trying, trying to shed a couple pounds, it's been, it's going to be difficult for me to figure out how to wake up without an energy drink. Another overpowered perfect ball. Could we be onto something here?
But again, hey, um, if you're not a subscriber, it'd be awesome if you subscribe. Please hit the thumbs up and leave me a comment. You know, those things help. Subscriptions help. Comments help, believe it or not. And thumbs up help too. So any combination of those three things would be awesome. Looks like our opponent's giving up here. They're not even going to spin, adjust, anything. They're just going to hit a perfect ball and see if they can get lucky. I don't know how many games we played. Quite a few. Probably around 10. We only lost one, so that's nice. But hey, thanks for sticking with me, everybody. I hope you have a great Monday. Of course, I end it with a great shot. Couldn't get another perfect one, right? All right, everybody. I'll turn it off now. Thanks for watching.